Hello, welcome back. It is Wednesday of pre-K. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen Langford. I teach pre-K in Florida and I do weekly vlogs about what we're learning. Okay, so like I said, it is Wednesday and for those of you that have been around, you know Wednesday is our cooking day. The kids are outside. I have like maybe 15 minutes to knock this out and get our stuff ready. The theme this week is ponds, so that's like a lot of our sensory Play-Doh, books, things like that. But our letter of the week is V, and so our cooking goes along with the letter of the week, and it is V for volcano. So last year we made these volcano cupcakes and it was like, it was okay. So we're trying a new recipe, we've never done this one yet, so fingers crossed. Let's set it up. It's Thursday, I Wednesday ran out of time, had to wrap up that food thing, then I had to get all the cookbooks out, and then the kids were coming in, and it got a little, got a little wild. But we're here on Thursday finally, and I am happy to say I am done testing all the kids on the BDI. So my next step is inputting all that data into the computer, which is also a process. And then tomorrow, the window opens for all the other assessments that I have to give these kids. So. Oh, the end of the year is just full of testing, but also lots of fun things as well. And then I just got an email that my formal observation is going to be not this Friday, but next Friday. So I have to plan that out too. So I'll let you know when I figure it out because I have no idea yet. All right, let me show you some of the pond activities that we're doing this week. Okay, first up is this cute little chick. We found it on Pinterest and ran out of some of the yellow paper, but little circles, big circles, just triangle for the nose. We need to cut some more feet, it looks like, for tomorrow. And then these are cupcake liners, and so we just cut it and then they glue it facing out. Super easy. Also, sneak peek for some Special Olympics crafts that we're working on. That is gonna be at the end of April. Okay, and then this is our sensory bin for the week. I will insert a picture. I hopefully will not forget. Okay, so this is what the sensory book this is what the sensory bin looks like now, but here is what it looked like before. Uh, now they've played with it and mixed it up a little bit, but you know, we got the cute little ducks in here. We have these little turtle cutouts with the, some of them have sticker matches, there we go. And then the forceps, the Easter grass, the little beans, and then Play-Doh. We got our beads in here again, blue, clear, some more little rubber duckies, rollers with more turtles, our brown stumps. We have some cutouts of fish for the pond and a little duck, and then some rocks. And we also, today, learned about the life cycle of a frog. So we have these little frog pieces. We just had to add them to the same one. There we go. Tadpole, eggs, frog. Okay, and then our social emotional, I still have, this is kind of a mess, I'll show you this too. Look at this board, like whoa, craziness. This is, okay, our old, last week's social emotional is still up here because it's, it's naming your problem and then this week's is finding ways to solve the problem. So we did a little puppet activity where he had to solve the problem and the kids helped him solve his problem with different ways. We used this picture clue to show that they both wanted the same thing and what kind of solution they could come up with. Um, and then today I gave some other examples on the back of the card it gives you. So like right here. Ooh, can't see that. So it says like I lost my coat and the kids had to come up with 
different ways that they could solve that and I used little pop cubes like snap cubes and we came up with six different ideas and we counted how many ideas for how we could solve the problem and then there was another example um, and then the last one was spilling paint on a paper and they actually came up with seven ways to fix that so that was pretty impressive we also have our poem I have a little frog and we have the craft all ready for tomorrow and it's not a little frog at all it's a ginormous frog but oh well that's all we could find okay so for pond week on on monday as usual we started with our letter of the week book we wore our little crown and then on tuesday i we have a program called mayan which i've told you guys about a few times and i just found a simple book about things that we can find in the pond the story, it's on the computer, so it's like on the projector. It reads it to them, and then we pause, and we talked about what did we learn was new in the pond now, and throughout the whole story. And then afterwards, we made a chart, like a web, of all the things they could remember. So like recalling those key details a little bit. And they did really, really well with that, especially some of the new vocabulary that was in the pond words, like minnows, and I'm looking at the poster. Oh, beaver, the image wasn't very good for the beaver, so we looked up a picture of a beaver and an otter. And yeah, so that's what we did on Tuesday. Then Wednesday we did our cooking, so we did not read a book. And then today we read a book about growing frogs. So let me go grab that. Okay, so the growing frogs book, it's actually, it's kind of long, but I just skipped a few words, if you know what I mean, because they don't really follow along. And it goes through a little girl that ends up her mom talks her into getting some tadpoles from the pond and so they go and they they find the little eggs and they put it into a bucket and then they put it into like a tank at home and they observe and they watch and they see that the eggs then hatch and a little tadpole comes out and then the tadpole gets these little uh what they call them feathery things out of the head and then it gets its um back legs and then it's front legs and the tail goes away and then it's a frog so the whole cycle and i have those little things i showed you at play-doh so whenever it got to that part in the story like the eggs i let them pass around the eggs as i continued reading the story and honestly i was worried that like it would get crazy a kid would forget to pass but you know we have paras and stuff and they would remind gentle quiet reminders if somebody did forget but overall they did great they passed it they looked at it they got to touch it, feel it, really see a great example. So that was pretty cool. And then tomorrow for our literacy, we will do show and share. We remembered the bags to send home, so that is perfect. Yeah, so let's see, what else am I forgetting? We did our social emotional card, we did our reading. We can do small group next, I'll show you that. We finished, it was a full week, finally, a full five day week, so we did four days of of our small group and then tomorrow we'll have time to do our poem and our letter book that we do. Okay, so for math small group, which is the first round, I have these little pawns that have the number word as well as the number on it. And it also came with duck whoa. <laughs> Ducks. Now this could easily be an independent activity for a lot of the kids in my class now. They know how to recognize most of their numbers to 10 and they can count one-on-one -one correspondence to 10 as well. So obviously I didn't want to use my time just working on that with all of the groups if they already know how to do that by themselves. I like to kind of extend my lesson and last week we learned how to add one more. So what I did is I had all the pawns out like in a circle kind of in the middle of the table and when it was a kid's turn, I would give an example, like if, the, if I was thinking of the number four in my head, I would say, okay, what is three plus one more? And so first I would ask them without my fingers and see if they could just learn the one more. Oh, four. And some of them could, or um, if they needed a little more help, I would say, okay, let's put up three fingers and then one more finger. And they say four and I say that's right can you find the number four and then they would put four ducks on the pond so it just kind of like bumped up a really easy activity and then my higher group I even I made it even trickier I was like what's two plus two you know instead of just that one more so it was really good and then one of the kids I think it was one of the higher kids and I did two plus two when he put his ducks in the pond he even visually showed that so he had two ducks together and then he had two ducks together so we like grouped them and he said look two and two make and he put them together four and i was like perfect 
A plus, you're winning. And then Miss Sam's group, still a rolling cover, but it wasn't adding one more. Uh, I couldn't find one. I really wanted to find one because I was like, oh, they already did it with me. Then if they do it with Miss Sam, it'll just like reiterate that, but that's okay. Still good review. It was just rolling the dice and finding the number after counting the dots. And so it's kind of easy. They actually are pretty good at this, but it also helps them to, you know, visualize and really find those numbers when there's like a million numbers. The other activity was the independent one, so this is when we want it to be easy because we want them to be able to do it all by themselves. And it backfired a little bit because it was too easy and they got it done too quick, so we ended up like throwing in little dominoes and showing them that they had to match the number of dominoes. Like if there was three dots, they had to look for another one that had three dots and put them together the way you play dominoes. Okay, but anyways, I have the same pawn graph graphic and none of these have who they're from, so I'm sorry. I think it was a free packet though and it just has the dots, and so they would count the dots, and then they would find a frog, or there's fish that have the numbers, and there's also ducks. So if it's five, then they would find the one that matched, and they would put the fish into the pond. Easy, too easy, went way too fast, but at least they could do it by themselves, that's what matters. Okay, and then for literacy, I pulled out some more of those Lakeshore games that I showed you last week as well. Um, I did a phonemic awareness game and a voc vocabulary game. So in my group, I did this one and it shows phonemic awareness ending sounds. And it's swimming in the sea, it's fish, it's not really the pond, but you know, close enough. So it just gives them the fish on the board and it has a little picture on it. And then it comes with your little Velcro pouch to get the pieces out. And I've had these since I taught kindergarten and first grade. So it's definitely in those grades, they could do it more by themselves. This is definitely teacher directed. So I would pull out two different fish and we practiced learning what an ending sound was at first, you know, with their names. I always use their names when I'm introducing a new phonemic awareness because I feel like that really grabs their attention. So if the name was Kristen, I'd be like, Kristen, oh, I hear a n sound. Let's find another word. So I would pick one of the activities like waffle is on here, a waffle here, and they would figure out the ending sound and then we would go through these two words all together. It would say bottle, kangaroo, and so then they had to pick out of these two choices which one also had the same sound. I think that it made it a lot easier for them because I only gave them two choices. If I would have dumped out all the fish and had all these ones that like, and they actually had to look through a million different pictures and there's no way. So me like picking the fish on the board and giving them two to choose from made them very successful in knowing the skill, which is what we're looking for, you know? Not if you could play the game, right? If you know the skill. And then in Miss Sam's group, it was a game show board. <laughs> and it's all about what goes together, but also memory. So they would be flipped over like this, and on the board they would have to flip over, you know, memory, easy enough flip over two cards and see if they went together. So it's not matching, I kind of bumped it up a little bit. Uh, let's see, they have the answer key here. So like for the leaf one, the thing that went together with it was a watering can. And so that was a little trickier. And then the bird went together with a nest. So, so that was that was fun. Good thing they had Miss Sam because there's also no way they would have done that on their own, even though they know what goes together but playing memory and whoo, not yet. Uh, and then the independent group had pawns again, the same graphic. I swear I got this from the same packet, like a bunch of different pond activities. And it just had the uppercase letter with the lowercase letter. And we made this successful by setting it up for them. We put, like before they got started on their own, I just laid out all the pawns so they could see all the letters, very organized, like in rows, you know? And then I kept the fish and the ducks and the frogs in the bag and they had to take one out, look at the letter and find the match. So if it's organized, they can do it. If I'm just like, here's your game, good luck, doesn't work. I do wanna show you data folder that is on my Teachers Pay Teachers. I can link it below. It's been very popular. It, I love it because it's an easy way for me to track data quickly and then it's also great for the kids to visually see how much they're learning and then it's also a great tool to just send home throughout the year so parents can keep track of 
what their kids are learning and our goals, stuff like that. So the very first page is the uppercase letter one. And I wanted to show it to you guys because I feel like when I showed it last time it was blank, just showing you what it looked like without being used. But this is a student and it's exactly how I use it. So. Okay, so this particular student, we started with red. So in the very beginning of the year, they already knew 10 uppercase letters. And so visually, it shows those 10 colored in. And then the next time we assessed, they had learned four more. And it shows those. And then the next time, they had learned five more. So we added those on. And then now, the last time we just tested them, they know all but one letter. Like, how exciting is that for a parent and a child to see almost all of these colored in? And it looks great. And then down here, we just made a goal. We usually just add two or three more to the number. Simple goal. Obviously here, only one more. And we do that for everything. So we have the uppercase. We have the lowercase letters. I mean, this kid is making some gains. We have our letter sounds. This one is sight words. So I do think next year I'm not going to put the sight words in for everybody until they know all their letters and sounds. And then I can add it in. I mean, we, we're briefly going over sight words, but if those kids aren't ready, I'm not going to. Like, this is not where they need to be yet. And then the numbers, shapes, we, they already knew all this so far. We haven't regrouped our shapes again yet, so no data has increased here. And then down at the bottom, showing how high they can count. This kid in particular keeps forgetting that number 13. Like they did great in the beginning of the year, but then now they're still struggling with it. Even though this time when I assessed this kid, they slowed down to say number 13 and like still skipped it. So he's aware that he's, He's skipping 13, but now we just have to get him to not skip it. And then these are just some basic skills that we work on. This one, um, I haven't really assessed it. We just do retelling like whole groups. So that's why it's not colored yet. I'm waiting till the end. And then same with this one. This ordinal number one is more just like we haven't hit that skill in math yet. So obviously we haven't been able to color it. So as you can see, that data binder is so super helpful. It's also, I just love seeing it at the end of the year. It's so powerful for the kids and the parents to see visually the growth that they've made throughout the year. Cause that's what this program is. Like they're not expected to come in knowing all this stuff yet. They're gonna learn, they're gonna keep growing. So love that. Also we have conference night coming up and I am de very determined to try and do some type of student led conference in pre-K. I have never done it before, but I've done it in kindergarten and in first grade. So I think it's a, like the end of the month, so fingers crossed. So that's pretty much it for this week. I hope you got something out of it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it that big thumbs up. Click that subscription button and that notification bell and I will see you next week. Also, if I decide to do those student-led conferences, I will post about a video all about it so that you guys can see how easy it is because it's really not that hard, I promise. It's, it's actually easier than a real conference because you're just showing off what your kids can do and at the end of the year, they can do a lot. So I'll see you very soon, bye.